All right, welcome to the Surveillance Report 162 Q&A, where we are answering questions from our patrons who are contributing $5 a month or more and have chosen to ask us a question this week. This week we have good questions, questions about cubes, um, questions about uh, neurodivergency and privacy, questions about IoT devices, and then a couple of personal questions. So let's jump in. We're going to start with our first question from David Johnson, which is directed at me. <laughs> Thank you. Um, he says, this may primarily be a question for Nate as it has to do with cubes from the perspective of a curious non-user. It has been described as having a steep learning curve, and even Michael Basil wrote that he was not able to uh, use it as a daily driver. When on cubes, what do you find to be impossible or to be uh, the most painful or take the most time or effort? For unreliable, glitchy, inefficient, etc., that would be much easier to do on a mainstream Linux distro, and vice versa. What do you find to be very easy that would be impossible slash painful, etc., with a mainstream distro? Um, so, as the uh, daily cubes user, I will say the impossible thing is anything graphically involved. <laughs> so, gaming, uh, video editing. That's that's why I have two different devices because I cannot imagine trying to video edit on cubes. That sounds like a recipe for self-loathing um i did one time i played a game of civilization in a windows virtual machine because me and a friend were playing uh an online game even though we were in the same room and i thought i would be clever and i'd have it open so that way we could play in real time and i could still do other work and it was so slow that at one point i ended up accidentally forfeiting the game because of the lag in the menu so do not recommend um for the record i've never tried gpu pass through i'm really curious about it and maybe that would have fixed it but I've also heard it's extremely unstable. Um, yeah, and as far as like what would be easier, in my opinion, um, or no, 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 that's impossible. Yeah, yeah. What's easier on cubes that would be harder on a mainstream distro? Um, compartmentalization. Like I can have multiple signal accounts. I can have multiple matrix accounts using any client that I want, even if it doesn't support multi-user account. Um, I can have multiple key pass databases. Uh, I mean, there's, yeah. There's a lot of it. I mean, it, it's all about compartmentalization, but yeah, take your pick. There's so many things that compartmentalization related are a breeze on cubes. So I don't know if you have anything to add. How's the networking side of things? Oh, yes. <laughs> That's one of my other favorite things about cubes. So you have um, SysNet, which is your actual network, like your Wi-Fi connection. And then you have Sys Firewall, which you can, for the record, you can reconfigure this how any, however you want. And then by default, it comes with Sys Hunix, which is a Tor connection. But you can also add Sys VPN, and you can do it with uh, Proton. You can do it with Mulvad. Mulvad actually has a great walkthrough on how to do it on their website. Um, you can probably do it with several other VPNs out there. So you could use multiple VPNs. You could send one VPN through Tor and one VPN through um, your or excuse me, you can send one cube through Tor and one through VPN. You can send one through ClearNet. Like I know um, some people have reported that ba their bank is pretty aggressive about using VPNs or something like that. You could have one that is just for banking that doesn't use a VPN if, if you're in that situation. So yeah, super, super easy. Next, next question is from Mr. Camel 999 it says, Happy New Year. They asked this, I think the week before. Um, but they were late to that Q&A because we already recorded it, so it's still here. But yes, still Happy New Year. Um, and what are y'all's favorite Christmas present you got this year um, or whatever you celebrate? And um, I definitely got a lot of cool gifts, I think. Um, someone gave me this, like, honey that wasn't from bees, which was interesting. And it tasted really good. What was it from? Um, it's like a mix of different, like, it's a mix of, like, different fruit. Huh condensed like it, it it makes sense because i feel like that's where the flavor from honey might come from maybe my head goes but yeah it tastes pretty good I try it. it's not like the best honey i've ever had but like i put it in my tea now and it's pretty good um but my favorite thing uh my one of my friends like cross stitched <laughs> this for me oh you can't really see it with the glare it, no that but it's like a runner dude and i thought it was really cute so that's super cool yeah that was probably the best gift i got um, <laughs> before you all feel really bad for me, I actually didn't get any gifts, uh, but I'm, <laughs> see, here's the thing. And you got to talk to me over the break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll call that a gift. <laughs> um, but for real, I, I didn't get any, any physical presence and th there's two reasons. One is because I'm a minimalist. And so there's just never anything like. Well, there's three reasons. One is because I'm a minimalist. There's just never anything that I really want. Two is because I'm 
a grown adult who makes a paycheck and like not not to be mean or rude or anything but if i want something i just go buy it and number right. three is um because and this has been going on for years and years because i got into music in college all the things i want now were like super crazy expensive like I did actually have a family member text me and my wife and was like, Hey, what do you guys want? Like for Christmas, you know, limits about 50 bucks. And both of us were like, I don't know, a, a gift card. We can go out to dinner. Like there's really nothing we want that's under 50 bucks. So it's kind of at the point where it's like, you can either send me money and I can put it towards something super expensive or like, that's about it. Um, but I did get one thing from my, my stepdad, um, not to bring down the mood, but you know, cause my mom, uh, passed and my, my stepdad has been a little more communicative, which is good. Cause I'm, I want to make sure he's doing okay. But he did send me a, a harmonica cause he's also a musician and it was cheap. So he didn't ask, he just sent it, but yeah. So I guess that counts. <laughs> okay. The next question is also primarily for me. It comes from lady Lucifer and on the topic of family, uh, Nate, I believe I recall you saying in an earlier podcast that your wife has ADHD. Would you mind sharing which privacy respecting apps she has found helpful, such as habit trackers, calendar apps, to-do lists, et cetera. Um, y'all are not going to like this answer. So I, I actually asked her when I read this and her answer was honestly, she doesn't really use any privacy respecting apps. Um, she is mindful. She tries really hard. Like, well, no, I'll, I'll talk about this for a second. So she made a point of saying, number one, everybody's ADHD is different. You know, everybody's experience is different. The way hers works is she wants things that look good, but also like has the things she needs. So for example, Proton, um, because her most recent thing was she was trying to use Nextcloud and just wasn't for her. And when she said, I want things that look pretty. And my first thought was like, well, what about Proton? And she's like, yes, but Proton doesn't have tasks. And like Google has, and Nextcloud does too, but Nextcloud to her defense looks, I'm not going to say terrible. It's come a long way, but it, it has room for improvement. And you know, like Nextcloud and Google have like that integration where you can see your tasks on your calendar and it just, it works really well. And Proton doesn't have that. So Proton checks like the, the, the looks pretty, but it doesn't have the actual things she needs. Um, so I, I, I'm not gonna lie. It's end of day when we're recording this and I'm very tired, so I'm not going to go on a whole rant, but it, it kind of reminds me like a lot of the time we're really quick to complain about people, you know, like signal rolled out gift support, for example. And everybody was like, who cares? Myself included for the record. I don't care, but there's some people that really do care. Like I've also mentioned in the past about my wife, she's amazing at getting people to switch to signal. And that's one of the ways she's able to do it is like, it's got gifts. It's got this huge message attachment size. There's group chats, regardless of which, you know, platform you're on, you can emoji react to messages, all these things. And you know, those are the kind of things that tip the needle for some people. So like it definitely should not be prioritized over actual security and functionality and stability and stuff like that. But I mean, especially for the bigger companies, like, I don't really see the issue with them rolling out these features, assuming again, they're not detrimental because that could be what hooks somebody in. Like she uses signal religiously signal checks all the boxes. Okay. So two X's ago, <laughs> um, they had ADHD and it was pretty good, but they used also just mainstream tools as well. I did get them to use signal. I got them on the brave browser. Yeah. She uses brave um, too, but I never really, yeah, I never really got far enough to like look into the productivity tool side of things. Um, She's tried, and, man, just not, not to cut you off, but for the record, she yeah. gave Nextcloud a real shot. She gave Proton a real shot. Like, she tries, but they just don't stick. Yeah, I guess from my perspective on it, and this is, you know, if we're, if you're someone who's actively interested in privacy and security, I'm not going to say this to you, but if it's someone in your life, I'd be a lot more concerned about their messenger, their browser, their search engine, and things like that before I start touching productivity tools, mm -hmm. right? Like what you're doing, like it, it does matter, right? It is sensitive data, it can be sensitive data, but also I think in the scope of prioritizing things that are important, that just wasn't even something that was coming to mind when it came to, to my ex that I'm referring to. It was interesting because I don't wanna say I was an ADHD denier or something like that, it wasn't that insane. Um, but I was kind of, I didn't really understand ADHD. I was like, I don't really understand how it impacts people. And it wasn't until I dated that ex that I go, holy shit. Like, well, no, I'm, you see it. Cause it's, it's very different. Like hearing about it, reading about it and actually like having someone you care about have it and seeing like the things they deal with and the things they struggle with yeah. that just aren't even things that I would think about. Um, 
because we we had a very good like it was a relationship with a lot of open communication and so there was a lot of like i feel stupid about this i feel blah 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 and um there was also just a lot of like negative feedback loops and it was really it was it was, it was hard to watch it um is. and like i really wanted to support them but like yeah it's not until like i saw it that i realized oh wow this is like a like, I knew it was a real thing, but, like, no, this is a real thing, you know, if that makes sense. No, I, I was just going to say I'm in the same boat where, like, she was diagnosed after we got together. So, like, when she got diagnosed, it's, it, yeah, it's like you said, like, I didn't know much about it. And so that's when I started reading. And she has it pretty bad. Like, like there was one, one of the books I read, the guy is, like, really anti-medication. And it, it kind of turned me off at first. But then, like, as he went through the book, he kind of, like, basically clarified. He's like... Some people are so extreme they do need medication, but I don't think most people do. And the more he went through the book, the more I started realizing, I'm like, I'm pretty sure you would prescribe medication to my wife. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so that's why it's like, if you have to use Google Calendar, use Google Calendar because the choices are use Google Calendar and get shit done or don't use Google Calendar and nothing gets done. <laughs> and I cannot run the house by myself. It's just not happening. Our next question from M. Do you use any IoT smart plug slash switches or would you recommend avoiding them in case they don't get software updates? Wirecutter recommends a number of different TP-Link, Casa, smart Wi-Fi plug options, but doesn't like, doesn't explain the results of their security and privacy testing. I personally don't use any smart plugs or switches. So we have, I'm trying to think, not including smartphones and not including laptops. We have one, no, we have two. We have two smart TVs. And I just recently got a smart thermostat, which I'm not super impressed with. Like, there's little things that are kind of nifty, but overall, I'm like, I could have lived without this super easily, so I probably won't do that again. Um, that's all we got, really. So, I don't know. It's uh, I guess it's one of those things, like we were just talking about with ADHD. Like, if it serves some kind of purpose that you actually need, um, then I would go ahead and get one. But it's kind of one of those things that I have a feeling that... It's like the thermostat. Like, sure, it makes life convenient, but, it, I, you know, I could live without it just as easily. And if that's the case, I wouldn't get one. Um, I would also say check other sources than wire cutter. Check a lot of different sources, but also, like, just check and see if they get updates. Like, you'll you'll probably find out on some forums, like, you know, Reddit and... Um, I don't know. What what other forums are there out there? Anyways, you'll probably find out on forums if they get updates or not. You can also reach out to them directly. I mean... You're, you're a potential customer and it takes two seconds to answer a question. And if they don't answer you, that tells you how much they value you as a customer. I don't know. I, that, that would be my recommendation. If you need to get one, reach out and ask them if they get updates. I don't have any specific recommendations, nor do I really use them. So all I'll say is just, I don't know. I would say like the, the main things to look for are definitely software updates mm -hmm. and just look to see what the security and privacy features that they advertise on their site are um and it's the kind of thing where there might be specific communities i would maybe ask the networking subreddit um they probably might be able to like, put you in the right direction because i don't really have much experience with these uh it's not something i use and also again like normal stuff like set strong passwords when when you can um you can separate things on your network uh there's still like always just a normal go-to recommendations um last question is from foss enjoyer and it was how is visiting germany any culture shocks i hope you had a good time in my home country um, so they, I believe, are referring to the Nextcloud conference I went to in Berlin, which I made a whole video about on TechLore. Everyone can go watch it. I saw it. it. Um, Nate I saw watched it. it. So everyone else should it watch it. It was good. <laughs> um, and I don't know. I would say it was a lot more English friendly than I was expecting. Um, Berlin was, I don't know. I heard a lot of mixed things about the transportation system. Some people said it wasn't very good. And coming from the U.S., I think my standards are a little bit different for that. So I was actually pretty impressed with it. <laughs> so um, I will say the, Engl the English support for, like, the transportation system was really bad. A lot of it was, like, only in German, and to have to go into English was kind of difficult. But a lot of it just made sense even in German. I was still able to navigate things, and it wasn't a big deal. As long as you know names, like, and where you need to go, you're normally fine. Um Food was delicious and like so many, uh, like, yeah, the food was incredible. That was my favorite part of Berlin, actually, I think, um, with just all the incredible food. And people were super friendly. Yeah, there wasn't really much culture shock because I've been to Europe before. I think if it was my first time in Europe, there would have been more culture shock. Um, but yeah, it was a great time. And everyone at that conference, that was actually the big culture shock for me, to be honest, if there was one. 
it was more of just like the strong community at the next Con conference because everyone was just so friendly and I didn't feel like I was surrounded by a bunch of weirdos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I felt like I was surrounded by like a bunch of normal people who just happened to also like digital rights and like open source. And it was really cool. Whereas I feel like sometimes when I'm online, I feel like I'm surrounded by a bunch of weirdos, which I don't mind. I like weirdos, but it was like, wait, you're all kind of like normal people here. And maybe they are online too. Maybe everyone's just weird online, but yeah, I was like, oh, everyone's just kind of normal. Cool. As someone who regularly attends an in-person digital write-ups meet, digital rights meetup, I promise you it's not just online. There have been people showing up in person that like, as soon as they talk, I just look at like some of the other regulars and I'm just like, oh no, who found their way in here? Although I will say, you don't have to keep this in if you don't want, but I met a dude last, last month who was like legit from Ukraine. Like he was born in the Soviet Union. And he was everything I expected. No filter whatsoever. Straight up told you what was on his mind. It was like such a shock, but I love this guy. <laughs> I hope he comes back. It was great. That's all we had this week. So thank you all. Uh, Foss Enjoyer, M, Lady Lucifer, David Johnson, Mr. Camel. Thank you all for your questions. Uh, really had fun answering them. And if you want to ask a question and be on the next Q&A, you can ask us a question on Patreon for $5 a month or more. Um, somebody did ask one time, you can DM questions directly to us on Patreon if you're not comfortable sharing them for whatever reason on the screenshot, but yeah. Um, so stay tuned for surveillance port 163 should be coming out, uh, any day now and we'll see you guys soon.